Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to do multiple regression in R. Um, the data set we're going to be looking at I've imported already and so we can take a quick look at it. I've labeled it FC. FC is going to stand for fuel consumption. Um, so this data set is about fuel consumption here. Um, uh, actually this came from a larger data set uh, and I trimmed it a bit by uh, eliminating some of the features that we will not be considering. So as you can see here we have 51 examples on five features. Okay, And here they are. So it's tax, drivers, license, income, miles, fuel. So this is all about fuel consumption fuel is what we ultimately are interested in predicting or understanding and fuel has been scaled to be um, to represent the fuel consumption per person in that state uh, in that example so 690 means 690 you can roughly interpret this as 690 gallons consumed per year in this first example which you'll see in a second that each of these examples is our states uh, in the United States. Okay, miles is uh, miles of highway, specifically I believe federal highway in that particular example. So in that state, so this state has ninety-four thousand roughly miles of highway. Income is the income per person in that state. Driver's license is, this has been scaled, so driver's license here can be roughly interpreted as the number of licensed drivers per thousand population. Okay, So basically you can interpret this as higher number means there's more licensed drivers in that state or in that example. And tax is, that has to do with the gas tax or the uh, fuel tax. And that is um, charge per gallon. So we see that this is a gas tax rate. And so this can be interpreted as a percentage, I believe. OK, so like 18%, right? You pay at the gas pump on top of uh, the cost of, of the fuel itself. All right, so this does. I didn't want to go too much detail into it, the data, but you see it's about uh, fuel consumption, and we want to understand fuel consumption here. We want to understand how it varies as a function of the characteristics uh, like tax, driver's license, driver's income of uh, residents, and the miles of highway available. So clearly, our target here is fuel, and that will be our dependent variable or dependent feature and and here are our, our predictors our independent features variables okay and so ultimately it'd be nice to understand this relationship as a function of these characteristics and uh, be able to predict fuel consumption based on these characteristics so if um, a state wants to change its tax rate we can from what we learn here in multiple regression, we'll be able to see what effect that one might have on the fuel, of course, taking into account the other features as well. Okay, and, and, and same goes for any of the other features. Okay, so what effect does higher income have on fuel consumption? What effect does more miles of highway have on fuel consumption? But we're taking, taking them all together, we're going to not only be able to see perhaps their individual impacts, but uh, much more clearly we're going to see their collective impact. All right, So that's the data. Let's take also a quick look at it this way. Let's look at the first six observations of the 51. We see that, you see one row here, one example. It represents a state. I think that will be Alabama, for example. That's the tax rate. That's the number of driver's license per thousand population, that's the per capita income, that's the miles of highway, and that's the fuel consumption. Uh, all this, by the way, for was collected in year 2001. So we're using data collected in 2001. All right? All right. 
so let's just clear this screen and take a look at some exploratory data analysis that we might want to consider before we jump in to try to apply uh, multiple linear regression. All right, so first off, I would definitely consider making a scatter plot matrix first. So pairs function will do this for us. We've seen this before. And basically, at this point, since, by the way, all of our features were of the numeric type, were numbers, right? We have some integers here, but they're all numbers, right? So a scatter plot matrix, you can individually name the variables like this that you're interested, but since we want all of them, you can just name the data frame. Hit enter, and we get this nice visual representation of our data. And we can look in the bottom row first and see how each of these, how each of these guys, these independent features, relate to our target fuel. Okay, so target for on this bottom row is the y-axis, right? So we can see that tax, it looks like very loosely that as tax looks like as it increases, as the tax rate increases, there's this general flow of fuel consumption decreasing, albeit very variable, right? Driver's license, it looks like as the number of drivers licensed drivers the license drivers increases, the fuel com consumption increases, albeit with a lot of variability. Income. Looks like as income increases, that fuel decreases roughly with a lot of variation again. And finally, miles, it looks like there is this kind of curved relationship here. Whereas income, as miles of highway increases, fuel consumption increases, and you could argue here this is not that linear, okay? And we might look into that to kind of perhaps transform this variable to make it linear. So later maybe I'll suggest taking a log of miles instead of just miles, okay? On top of this first analysis on this dimension, we could also see how the features are related to each other. So how are these four related to each other? Well, scatterplot lets us look at the marginal relationships. In other words, two variables at a time, we can see how they're related, right? So looking at these, we see that at best, we could, we could choose either this triangle or, the, or this triangle. So they're gonna give us the same information, just kind of flipped. So let me, analyze this top triangle here. You see, at best, these scatter plots are all very uh, weakly related, show a very weak relationship. This kind of gives you a little bit of strength here. But these are all very weak. And although this may seem like uh, not a good sign, it's actually a pretty good sign. It, it's really great if, I mean, it's not much of a choice oftentimes, but it's really great when the independent features are not correlated to each other because there is the opportunity that they're going to contribute something unique to the prediction of our target. Okay, so I'll repeat that one more time. If these independent features are very highly related to each other, let me use this word related, general, then they would be um, kind of redundant in trying to predict your target. Okay, so this is a good sign, all right? Um, I don't want to go too far into uh, uh, discussion of this. I want to focus more on the, on the R programming here in these videos. So uh, we've looked at the uh, scatterplot matrix. We've got a rough idea of what's going on. Let's also look at the correla a correlation matrix, which will reinforce what we see here. Uh, first off, you remember the, this diagonal is always going to be 1 because that's the correlation between a feature and itself. So obviously that's 1. Looking at the rest of these, so you can again choose the upper triangle and just look at that. You see very small correlations, very low. 
very low. Um, slightly high here. Right, we have some kind of moderate correlation between the features and fuel, which is what this last column represents here. Right. Uh, the f as far as tax, tax is very weakly uh, associated linearly with the other features. Same goes for driver's license, a little bit stronger, and income. And that's pretty much what we saw here. For example, look at this, um, this one of all the uh, correlations between the independent variables it seemed to me like this one I pointed out might be the most to talk about to notice and in this case that was between driver's license and fuel so that actually this column over here represents the uh, correlation with the dependent feature so really we got to limit our discussion to these guys you see these are all very loosely correlated to each other right and so the the correlation matrix reinforces what we saw in our scatter plot matrix okay um, again I'm, bre I'm, I'm kind of uh, flying through some of this analysis another nice thing to maybe see even prior to these was um, a summary of in, in a univariate sense to just look at uh, each variable alone not in relation and just see how it varies so you see tax rate has a minimum of 7.5 maximum of 29 percent um, across all the data uh, fuel for example the state with the least fuel consumption state with the most average median so measure of center and so on so we, this would be a good place to start so between this these summaries the scatter plot matrix and the correlation matrix, uh, you, you begin to get some idea of what this the structure of this data is and how the features relate to each other. Okay, once this phase is complete uh, and uh, you have a, a good idea for um, how uh, what you what to expect as far as um, predicting fuel you know for example as tax rate increases there seems to be a decrease in fuel consumption and and other things we we briefly discussed then you can consider now applying a multiple re linear regression model looking at the data again let me reinforce what we're trying to predict is fuel consumption fuel consumption is a number this is ripe example for multiple regression and because we have multiple predictors here all right so in the next video i'm going to continue from here and show you how to specify the multiple linear regression model and look at some of the summary statistics uh, and output that we're we'd be interested in okay so watch part two